Hey, this is Justin from Breaking the CRE, and in today's video, we're going to talk about a discounted cash flow analysis in real estate investment, specifically how to choose a discount rate. So if you're heading into a real estate private equity interview, or you're looking to analyze your own real estate deals and using the DCF analysis to do it, make sure to stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investment analysis and real estate investing careers. So if you're looking to break into the industry for the first time, or you're looking to do your first deal, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. So if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know that I'm a pretty big proponent of using the IRR or internal rate of return in your investment analysis. But many people who are used to running analyses of different investment vehicles may be more comfortable with the DCF analysis approach. And that totally works too, because it gets you to the same conclusion at the end of the day. But when you're doing a DCF analysis, one of the hardest parts is deciding what your discount rate is going to be. So in this video, we're going to talk about how you can actually choose a discount rate for your discounted cash flow analysis that you're doing for a real estate deal and what makes sense for you and the property that you're analyzing. So first, to break this down a little further, let's talk about what the discount rate in a discounted cash flow analysis actually is. Now you can think about the discount rate in a discounted cash flow analysis as essentially a rate of return taking into account the time value of money. So in a real estate deal, what you can do is think of that discount rate as really the required annualized rate of return that you're going to need in order for your real estate deal to make sense to invest in at a certain purchase price. So for example, if you're looking at buying an office building and you need a 12% annualized rate of return on your investment over a five year period in order to make that deal worthwhile, then you could set your discount rate to 12%. So with all of that said, that leads to the next question, which is what should your discount rate actually be? And how do you decide what that annualized rate of return metric should be as well? Well, in real estate, as with many other investment vehicles, real estate investors will price assets based on risk adjusted returns. And all that really means is that the higher the risk that the investor is taking on, the higher the required returns in order to make the deal worthwhile. Same thing for lower risk deals. The lower the risk the investor is taking on, the lower the required rate of return on an annualized basis the investor is going to require. Now in real estate on a leveraged basis, meaning that there is debt being used to acquire the property, most return targets are somewhere between seven and 20% per year. Now, like I said, this is going to be based on the risk level of the deal. So if you're buying a brand new office building in downtown Manhattan with Google as your main tenant, you may use a discount rate closer to 7% for that deal. On the other hand, if you're buying a 20 year old 60% occupied shopping center in Phoenix, Arizona, that discount rate would be much closer to 20% in order for that deal to make sense for investors to compensate those investors for the risk that they're taking by investing in that deal. So in short, the higher the risk that you're taking, the higher your annualized rate of return needs to be in order to compensate investors for taking on that risk. And with that, the higher your discount rate should be. And the same thing goes for the opposite side of the coin. The lower the risk that you're taking on, the lower the required annualized rate of return and the lower your discount rate should be. But usually it's going to fall somewhere between 7% for the lowest risk deals and about 20% for the highest risk deals in real estate. Now, if you want to learn more about risk adjusted returns and the different capital risk buckets that real estate investors will use in order to set their return targets, I'd highly recommend checking out my course, Commercial Real Estate Investing 101, which goes over the main capital risk buckets used in real estate and how they're used specifically in private equity real estate analysis. And if you want to go all in on this and really master real estate financial modeling and analysis, check out Break into CRE Academy, and that includes all Break into CRE courses, instant access to all Break into CRE models, and some additional one on one support to help get you where you want to go in the business faster. Now, if you like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel and sharing this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.